You're listening to War. We are America Radio. 20 seconds and counting. 17 seconds and counting. Guidance in turn. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have ignition sequence start. Engines on. 5, 4, 3, Good evening, good evening. You're truly Dan Adams, a.k.a. the Soulful Conservative. Yes, indeed. This is the video broadcast of the Political Heat Live here on War Radio. We will be definitely the number one political government, whatever you want to call it, here on our new platform, the Sirius Network. Big shout out to my man Wayne Dupree, the CEO of War Radio. We are America Radio. And once again, this is George Trudeau, Dan Adams, a.k.a. The Soulful Conservative. Got a lot to get into, so we're going to go ahead and get right into it. And I'm hoping I'm coming to you live. I'm hoping I'm coming to you direct. And I'm hoping I'm to, hope I'm coming to you nice and clear. I think I got everything under control this week. So I hope you're enjoying what you're hearing, what you're seeing. Now, as we go ahead and get into what we need to get into this week, it's, I tell you what, people, it's a lot going on. It's just, it's just so much going on. I, I can't even. Wow. Let me just take a Wusa. For those who don't know what Wusa is, if you've seen the movie Bad Boys Two, Martin Lawrence, you know he had his issues, anger management, and things of that nature, and he was going to a psychologist, and they was, was telling him the Wusa to get himself into a particular uh, frame of mind. That's what I'm trying to do right now is get into some type of woosa so I can bring you the best and the latest and the greatest here on Political Heat Live on War Radio. Monday evening is 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get this first clip going here because I want to get all my anger, like my really, like real, like rough, rugged and raw anger out right now. And it has to do with Hussein. Yes, that man. The president of the United States. He was just over and I guess he's traveling all over Asia. And I'm not sure exactly. I believe this was Indonesia where he was at, I think. And he took a question from a particular woman. And I don't even this the question was so stupid that I don't even want to play the question. But I am gonna play Hussein's response. And get that cued up right here. And it's it's telling. Very telling as to who this man is. Look, the, the United States uh, in many ways is better positioned than it has ever been for leadership in the 21st century. Um, our economy after the crisis uh, in 2007-2008 has recovered faster than almost any other country. Uh, okay, wait one second. Wait. <laughs> Okay, our economy has recovered faster than any country that had to deal with the crisis that we had. Of course, this man has no idea what he's talking about. He's living in la-la land. There's so many people displaced in America right now. that He doesn't have a clue. America, he does not have a clue. Uh, our, and, and, and our economy is stronger than most other large uh, developed economies in the world. Uh, we are producing more energy than ever before, producing more clean energy than ever before. More young people are going to college than ever before. Um, we uh, have expanded health care through the program uh, that I set up, uh, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you know, we have some of the best businesses in the world, incredible entrepreneurship. And, and okay, wait, 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 one second. Let's take that back. I don't want to rewind it, but you heard what he said about the affordable CAC that he put in place. Did you catch that? That he put in place. So he's basically tearing down 
his statement of you didn't build that somebody else made that happen so obviously when him taking full credit for the affordable care act aka care i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna up hussein will be who he is for me until he is out of office because once again it encapsulates who he is what he's all about and what he's been for the past seven years but let's get back to the nonsense that this idiot's been talking about we, we remain the leader in innovation and new ideas and in the, the technology sector uh, obviously uh, you know we continue to to generate new ideas all the time but when you go to the United States, I think there, there are still some anxieties. And, and I would say that, uh, uh, number one, in the United States, there is a, a growing inequality that I think is a, a real problem, not just for the United States, but around the world. And some of this has to do with technology is replacing low-skilled jobs and automation and so it's harder for people if they don't have good educations to make a living uh, there's more global competition that's putting pressure on middle-class families and when people feel economic stress and inequality then uh, I think the, the uh, then politics becomes harder because people are afraid for their futures and sometimes politics can become much more divided than it used to be. Also what happens is when there's more inequality, the people who are powerful can influence the political system to further reinforce their privilege. Okay. Did you hear what he just said? Did you catch that last 30 seconds to a minute? He started talking about inequality. Then he started talking about the political system. And then he started referencing when people who are in power in that political system can basically reign over those who do not have that political power structure. Okay, back in 2008, how much money did that man spend on his campaign? How much did that man spend in the 2012 campaign? So once again, the hypocrisy runs rampant and it makes it harder for ordinary people to feel that they have influence on the political process and so people become cynical um, now these are all problems that can be solved and I'm confident we will eventually solve them but uh, right now our political system does not work as well as it should and when I when I what I would say to young leaders what sort of pitfalls should you avoid uh, I would say number one uh, it is very important uh, to avoid any political system where money overwhelms ideas. Okay, hold, 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 hold on, hold on. Avoid any political system that, in his mind, crumbles idea making. I, I, I don't even. <laughs> I'm at a loss of words on this one. So I'm going to let this clip continue to its entirety. But man, you talk about the molasses stick. And the United States political process has become so expensive. And it lasts so long. And, and, and even though I was successful in it, um, you know, I, we spent you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in television advertising and in you know all the things that go into a US presidential campaign but it's also true for members of Congress uh, and when politicians have to raise so much money all the time then they start listening a little bit more to the people who have money as opposed to ordinary people and that I think is a danger that can be avoided by the system that you set up to make sure that uh, campaigns are not reliant just on money. Wow. Wow. I, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what, when I first heard that clip, 
And I went through it. And it's, it's, it goes on. It goes on for another like eight or nine, ten minutes or so. Just in that realm of what he was talking about. You got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, Hussein, am I really trying to pull the wool over the eyes of these people over here in Indonesia or wherever the heck he was at? And they're just sitting there just saying, oh my gosh, look at the, oh my gosh, Hussein is talking, Hussein is talking, oh my, we must listen, we must listen. Meanwhile, this man has no clue what he's talking about, none whatsoever, okay, and these people just have no clue. And he's, and he's just berating once again, demeaning, besmirching America, once again, overseas, not here in America, not here in America, but overseas, he's making these statements, you know, he, he, he just feels like he just has to bash America at every turn, every turn, this man has to bash America. And you wonder why people like me, us in the conservative movement, us in the grassroots movement, sometimes get discouraged. And I mean really discouraged to the point where you just want to go off the grid. Completely go off the grid. But we can't do that. We know that. Because we have to fight, 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 fight. Continue to fight. Continue to fight. Continue to wrestle. Continue to wrestle this alligator of liberalism this alligator of communism and marxism we can't give up we can never give up never 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 so i wanted to get that clip out of the way because even though the remainder of my show this evening will be dealing with certain things in regards to hussein but as far as showing him I just wanted to just, you know, and there may be a clip or two that may have a segment of him in it, in it. But it's very short. You'll see him for a half a second. You don't have to deal with his voice and his face and his everything about him. But what I want to play next here. <laughs> this is pretty good, people. This is pretty good. Now, you know we have people on the left that do have some common sense. Okay. And the theme... Going up into the the one and only break at the bottom of the hour has to deal with Hussein's dealing with ISIS, radical Islam, even though he can't or won't utter those words. Those words have never come out of his mouth. Radical Islam, radical Islamist, radical jihadist, Islamic jihadist, Islamic jihadism, whatever you want to call it. The words never have come out of this man's mouth. And this clip right here from the morning, Joe, got kind of cut off at the beginning. But you'll understand exactly where this dude is coming from. They're a bunch of killers with good social media. It, it, it is staggering. I don't know where to begin. Democrats on the Hill don't know where to begin. Foreign policy experts don't know wh wh where to begin. John Kerry said the same thing, that it was much to do about nothing. They have created a network. Mike, there's not an intel agency on the planet that doesn't fear, I will use the word, fear ISIS. And we'll show polls in a second that show he's radically out of step without where the American people are, where our allies are, where foreign policy experts are. Why? Okay. Okay. Right there. Joe Scarborough hits it. He is so out of touch with America and its pulse and what we're thinking and what we're worried about and what our future should be. He is so this. I don't know if he's in a separate parallel universe. I don't know if he's in bizarre world and on, on Seinfeld. I don't know where this man is, but he is not in reality in the reality that we know. He is nowhere near it. The exit signs must have been painted over and said, continue on the path that you're going because everything's fine and daisy. It's with daisies all over the place and lilies and whatever the heck else that you call rosy, the rosiest picture that you don't want to even point out and put on display 
That man gets me so upset. And I thought I was, I was told myself I wasn't going to get upset again, people. And as I look you in the camera right now, I said I wasn't going to get mad. But this man takes me there. And I know he takes you there too. So I'm going to let this clip continue. Oh my goodness. Where do you go from saying they're a JV team, they're contained, they can't attack the United States, they're just a bunch of killers with guns and social media? Well, first of all, the intelligence story is a huge story, and you're right. Uh, we, I would hope it's not true, but if it is what, true... What, about them cooking the books yes, to follow that what is, that the is president a, wants? Not That's fitting an the narrative. enormous story an enormous story and you've got to find out a is it true and b if it is indeed true where did the pressure to cook the books come from where did it emanate from oh, how much does that say how much does that sound like 2002 and the lead up to the iraq war there are a great deal of similarities between 2002 and, and the this intel story secondly it's if you if you listen to people just people the President of the United States, it's time for him to address the United States. It's time for him to give a speech. Mike, to we're, we're, we're indicating that who we're is around him? a global war. Who is around terror. him, Mike, to speak truth to power and say, Mr. President, we're sorry. They aren't a JV Good team. Question. I don't you know stand answer. alone. You're scaring the hell out of the American people, Mr. President. Stop pretending. So look at they the polls. <laughs> and <they're laughs> oh, I'm glad I cut off you know who, Mika. Cause she's she's just a dumb nitwit. I don't even like I said. It's because her father is who he is, is where she is, and why she's where she's at. That woman couldn't think on her own. If someone, nah, but not say that I'm on air. <laughs> but you know where I'm trying to get at. You know exactly where I'm trying to go with the discussion. And it almost seems as if once again we have Joe Scarborough, who sometimes nails it. Sometimes it's on the fence and sometimes takes it to the, to the, I guess, mainstream, if you want to call it. But this time he nails it. He absolutely nails it. There's no, you can't be playing around when it comes to ISIS and radical Islam. Boko Haram, Al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda, Khorasan, every radical Islamic faction running and walking and just... Their presence on the earth right now. There is no more sitting back and allowing this man to get away with what he's gotten away with to this point. It's time to hold his feet and put his feet in hot coals. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. There's no more playing around. There's no more allowing the status quo to continue to be the status quo. And for those that seem to think that, okay, there's nothing that we can do. Well, then right there, you need to take a break. Go off the grid if you have to. Take a chill pill. Get a beer. Get, get a glass of wine. Get whatever you need to mellow out to get your mind back to where it needs to be. We cannot relent. We cannot take our foot off the gas. Our mere existence is at, its, is, is at stake if we allow this man, Hussein, allow this man to, okay, spout the idiocy and lunacy that the left and the lamestream media spouts in regards to, well, I guess maybe global warming and climate change is the main issue behind the gripes and grievances with these radical Islamists, with these radical jihadists, with these Islamic jihadists. It's because they don't have jobs, like Marie Harp said. They need some type of structure, some type of job fairs or something. No, it has nothing to do with any of the crap that they're spewing. It is an ideology within the religion, and I'm putting up air quotes. If you can see them, let me get them in here. Air quotes, religion of Islam. And I wish I had that clip that's going around right now. Maybe I'll have it and play it for you next week. But man, there was a conference or somewhere where there was a whole bunch of Muslims sitting in a room listening to this guy. Talking about moderate Muslims and how 
moderate Muslims believe all the stuff that these radical jihadists believe. So how can you call them moderate when that is the crux of Islam? There is no peaceful side. People within Islam who are Muslims, you know, take it upon themselves to be peaceful. Yes, indeed. I'm not taking any way, anything away from those people who are peaceful, who have no ill will towards the rest of mankind. I have come along. We can chill. We can hang out. We can do whatever. But I'm talking about the majority. And it's a majority, it's not a minority, it's a majority of people within the Islamic faith that believe what these radical jihadists, these radical Islamists, this Islamic jihadists believe. And as many of my war radio compadres have said on many of the shows that we have done, Islam is not a religion. Islam is not a religion. It is a political faction, a political system, a taxation system. It is a ideology that is brought upon destruction, mayhem, death. As we look at the recent attacks in Paris, where within the Islamic faith that you have seen a multitude of good works. Put that in your pipe and smoke it for a minute. Put that in your in your in your medulla oblongata, in your cerebellum, in your cerebral cortex, and think about what I just said. Where are the fruits of harvest of this peaceful religion of Islam? that we see scattered across the earth, the globe, immersed within mankind. Can somebody tell me where that exists? I don't see it. And now, with Hussein, the President of the United States of America, basically in the corner with the radical jihadists, in the corner with these Islamic jihadists, in the corner with the two words that he cannot mouth. Radical Islam. Well, guess what? I'm going to let my man Colonel Ralph Peters break it down to you. And yes, this is the Colonel Ralph Peters part of the political heat. He's going to bring it, break it down for you once again to let you know what the real deal is. And my question to you is... Why would we gamble with American lives? They are saying that the exact same thing that happened in Paris could happen here. And this president is insisting. Why would he gamble with the lives of the American people and run that sure. risk? You know, this is the first time I've ever had to disagree with something you said, Sean. You said, why would we do it? We are not doing it. Obama is doing it. And for two reasons. The lesser of the reasons is this, the Democratic Party's endless attempt to socially engineer a new America to change the face of America. But the greater reason is Obama comes from a hard left background and he is convinced on some level that you know the, the terrorists, everybody in the Middle East, are, they're oppressed and they do have a case. The most revealing remark ever made by a member of the Obama administration came this week when John Kerry said in France, he said, well, you know, there may have been some justification well, for the Charlie Hebdo massacre. Because I, I, we yeah, cannot, yeah, please do. Uh, this is too shocking. Because, it I, is. and I know he walked but back they believe his original, it, Sean. They he believe said there's a it. rationale for Charlie Hebdo. We're the bad guys. It's legitimate in that case. Listen to this. There's something different about what happened from Charlie Hebdo. And I think everybody would feel that. Uh, there was a sort of particularized focus and perhaps even a legitimacy uh, in terms of, uh, uh, not a legitimacy, but a, but a rationale that you could attach yourself to somehow and say, okay, they're really angry because of this or that. Oh, in that case, it's legitimate or there's a rationale because they drew a cartoon that offended yeah. some people. Sure. This, is, only... this is beyond embarrassing. It's now downright chilling, Lieutenant Colonel Peters. Yeah, that sure, that sure. is the mindset. I got, I got to tell you, this is, I mean, it's, 
It is, but the only difference between the Charlie Hebdo attacks and the attacks last Friday are that in the later attacks, 40 times more people died. I mean, I, I'm waiting for this president to call Eric Holder out of retirement to lead a new movement, Jihadi Lives Matter. I mean, he, this guy clearly... <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Ralph Peters, Jihadi Lives Matter. <laughs> clearly doesn't get the fact that we're not the problem. Islamic State, Al-Qaeda, the jihadis, Islamist fundamentalism, that is the problem. Not Paris, no, not no, the French, not the Germans, no, not America. No, they're the JV team. They're contained. These, it's workplace violence. Come on. Now, Colonel, you're, you're naive. But listen, Colonel, we yeah, got to go. Right. But I appreciate I your insight. Am. Thank you. Thank Lieutenant you, sure. Colonel Ralph Peters, thank you. Yes, indeed. Colonel Ralph Peters brings it, as he always does, and leaves you with a little nugget. Not even a little nugget. It's a big old nugget. A big old Fred G. Sanford piece of garbage in his, in his salvage yard nugget. Jihadi lives matter. And it can't be further from the truth in regards to Hussein. Can't be further from the truth. This man has aligned himself, has aligned himself, let me, let me get a little parallel here, all right? See that? He's aligned himself with Iran, okay? Iran, the number one sponsor of terror in the world. Who in their right mind? That would be like me going down south and trying to have some type of coalition with the KKK. That's right. Me going out there and saying, you know what? It's all right, KKK. Continue to use the N-word and call me that. But you know what? I want something in return from you. Really? America. Come on now. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't understand what the deal is. I don't understand how this situation looks. And as I'm looking at my... <laughs> Facebook chat here. People are saying that my, my, my logo is too big. My thing is this and that. I'm too small. Well, guess what? That's just how it's going to be for this broadcast, people. You should be worrying about what's coming out of my mouth. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? That should be your main concern. Forget that stupid thing right there down here where you can see it right here. It's just showing my time of the show, who I am, and what network I'm on. Worry about what's coming out of this mouth right here. That's what you should be worrying about. I'm on air. This is who I am. And me up here bringing you the real. F what's over here, okay? Talk. You want. You got issues with me? Anybody. And I, I don't care who it is. You got issues with me? Come. I had a, I had a dealing with a, with a Twitter, with a, another African American gentleman on Twitter coming at me because I'm conservative. Coming at me telling me I'm an Uncle Tom. Coming at me telling me this and that. Because I'm in an interracial marriage. And I'm a Catholic. And I'm this and that. Well, you know what? You just got me riled up, people. You just got me riled up. I don't know where this show was going to go from this point. I got a cup, about a minute and a half before I have to take my break. Maybe I need that break to calm myself down. I don't know. Because the beast is about to come out. The beast is... It's about to come out when I got people talking and telling me about trivial crap on my screen. Worry about what's coming out of this mouth. That's number one. That's number one. So let me go ahead and play my bumper music before I roll up out of here for this break. Bam! If you don't know who what this music is, uh-uh, 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 Because you know me, yours truly, Dan Adams, a.k.a. The Soulful Conservative, a.k.a. Melodic. M-E-L-O-D-I-Q Go to my website Melodic.com You can check out all the particulars in regards to my music I'm a multifaceted brother If you want to call it Yes, a multifaceted brother I guess that African American gentleman on Twitter Can't understand that I'm multifaceted That I don't have to fall in line And shuck and jive with the Democrat plantation I guess he must have forgot about that. I guess he didn't realize who I am and what I'm about. Well, when we come back from this break, 
I'm going to continue to bring the best of grassroots radio here on War Radio. We are America Radio with yours truly, Dan Adams, the AKA, the Soulful Conservative. And we'll be back in two and two and one. Yeah! Are you tired of people making fun of what you stand for? Are you angry at Washington, D.C. and the elected officials who don't want to hear what you have to say? Are you sick of watching those who claim to be conservative act like liberals? Are you tired of the mainstream media? We Are America Radio is now your alternative choice. We are a 24-7 network designed to inform, educate you with opinions like you've never heard before. Our blend of rookie and veteran voices will keep you wanting for me. Not to mention we are the number one political and government talk radio station on the Live 365 platform. So check out WeAreAmericaRadio.com for our direct stream or download us on your phone or tablet with the Live 365 or tune in free apps and just type in WAA Radio. Share us with your family members and co-workers. We are America. We are you. Are you among the 64% of Americans who believe our country is going in the wrong direction? If yes, then eVoiceAmerica.com is the political take action site we've all been waiting for. And it's really free. eVoice America provides your personal list of elected reps every time you log on. This makes it so easy to email your opinions and eVotes on top issues directly to each of our D.C. elected representatives. Evoice then publishes our evote majority percentages on top issues to each member of Congress and the media. Now, for the first time in history, we can know what millions of American citizens are telling Congress. No more gridlock. Join the new American majority using evoiceamerica.com, putting Americans in control of Congress. Visit evoiceamerica.com today. It's free and easy to use. That's evoiceamerica.com. I don't care who our candidate is, and I haven't since the beginning of this. I haven't. Ask not what the candidate can do for you. Ask what you can do for the candidate. We are there to confront them on behalf of our candidate. I will march behind whoever our candidate is, because if we don't, we lose. Because if we don't, we lose. Because if we don't, we lose. There are two paths. There are two paths. Black, white, gay, and straight. Anyone that's willing to stand next to me to fight the progressive left, I will be in that bunker. And if you're not in that bunker because you're not satisfied with this candidate, more than shame on you, you're on the other side. There's a movement in healthcare today. It's a movement of people that's ready to stand up and take charge of their health care. It's people like you and me who are tired of paying too much for health care and getting too little. People who are standing up for their values and letting their conscience make decisions based on timeless principles. It's a movement that is sweeping the nation and you need to be a part of it. Liberty Health Share is leading the movement of people who are looking for an alternative to traditional health insurance. Liberty Health Share is a health care sharing organization of people who are sharing the cost of health care in an easy and efficient way. Choose your own doctor, your own hospital, and live out your values in health care. Join the movement. Together, we're changing health care for good. Go to www.joinlhs.com or call 800-722-8041. Other high-powered weapons that military people use to kill in close combat? I don't think so. So I come from a different place than you do. I respect your views. I ask you to respect my views. Mr. Chairman, I nobody doubts 
her sincerity or her passion. And yet at the same time, I would note that she chose not to answer the question that I asked, which is, in her judgment, would it be consistent with the Constitution for Congress to specify which books are permitted and which books are not, and, and to use the specific The answer number? is obvious, no. You are listening to War. We are America Ready. Yes, you're truly Dan Adams, a.k.a. the Soulful Conservative. Now, sweat shirtless, because it's getting hot down in here. And I want to send a shout out to my War Radio compadres who was hitting me up on the Facebook chat. I was just kidding. I'll work out the particulars with the graphics and stuff next week. I can't do it while I'm doing this live. So, I could do it, but that would be unprofessional. <laughs> And for the two who know who I'm talking to, on the next show that we're going to be doing, we'll talk about it then. You know what I'm saying? I was just joking. Ha! But before we went to the break, we were talking about the Jihadis' Lives Matter. Yes, the Jihadis' Lives Matter. And that is the whole scope and frame and, I guess, a mindset that your president, the man that lives on 19... No, I'm about to say 1925. What is it? 15... What the heck is it? I know it's Pennsylvania Avenue. I forgot the actual number address. But you know who I'm talking about. Hussein and his insane in the men brain mentality when in regards to radical Islam, radical jihadists, radical Islamists, Islamic jihadism. I to throw every combination out so that everyone knows who, what, and what and what I'm talking about, why I'm talking about it, who I'm talking about, what faction of Islam, <laughs> what faction of Islam I'm talking about, radical, even though I'm seeing so many videos coming out now where these mullahs and, and imams and, and Muslim leaders within the moderate Muslim community saying stone stoning women for adultery no issue having to whatever punishment that the prophet muhammad allah has written in the quran they got no problem with it none so that's what a lot of these moderate muslims think this is what a lot of these moderate muslims believe that Stoning a woman, a woman, excuse me, stoning a woman because, you know, she's walking down the street without some type of male relative. Are you kidding me? Are you? Just think of how that aspect of Islam, Sharia law, was like the main law here in America or was like half of America or a quarter of America or three quarters of America just think about that people women across America any woman that's listening to me right now just think of the fact that you had to cover yourself from head to toe just think that you couldn't walk down the street without a male relative companion just think if for some reason you know you didn't like the fact that your husband was raping you had multiple wives you decided to skip out on him have a little extracurricular activity on the side but you could get stoned to death american women is that a little, little frightful is that little, little little hair on the back of the neck is just standing up a little bit i thought i just said what i just said in the layout of punishment that would come your way if Sharia law was the law of the land here in America I know you ain't feeling that I damn sure ain't and I know you're not so please spare me spare me once again spare me this whole idea of Hillary Clinton being the president of the United States of America this woman, supposedly, and listen to 
any interviews she's done, any of the debates that she's participated in so far, what is her main thing, or at least a focal point of what she's saying and what she's talking about? Her being a woman. Now, let's look at the Democrat Party. Let's look at the DNC chair, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Always going on her diatribe of the GOP's war on women. Where in America, where in America have you witnessed anyone within the Republican GOP political faction stoned a woman because she committed adultery? Where within this blessed land the United States of America, where have you seen anyone in the GOP Republican political faction stone a woman because she was walking down the street without a male relative companion? Please tell me, please point me in a direction where in this blessed land of the United States of America, where you've seen anyone within the GOP Republican political faction Deny a woman contraception, being able to drive, being able to go to school, being able to have children in and out of wedlock, being able to do almost whatever the hell they want. But yet, this woman, Hillary Clinton, this woman, Hillary Clinton, as I go through my stack of news articles here, because I want to read something in regards to this Hillary Clinton. How in the world can anyone, and I get it, there's liberals in this country that will go to bat for this woman till the day they die. But well, as a woman in America, how can you stand by a woman who takes money from foreign governments, Islamic foreign governments, Sharia law compliant governments who treat women Worse than dirt. Somebody explain that to me. Somebody enlighten me on that. Where any woman in America can vote for Hillary Clinton. Who takes money from these type of individuals. These type of foreign entities. Who treat women. Not even like second, third, fourth, fifth class citizens. But treats them worse than dirt. Well. Seems that a story on the hill is highlighting, once again, Hillary Clinton and her flip-flopping. That's right. Oh my gosh, Hillary Clinton flip-flopped again. Oh my gosh. Let me, let me read this to you. And I'm not going to read to you who wrote this article because it's very shocking that this particular person wrote this article about Hillary Clinton. But I'm glad this individual did. I'm glad this person allowed themselves to go beyond the normal route that the lamestream media takes Hillary portrays charter schools my five-year-old grandson goes to a big city charter school but Eli and his classmates do not belong to a union they do not give money to politicians they can't even vote maybe this is why Hillary Clinton has no problem doing a big political flip-flop on charter schools until her recent endorsements from teachers unions that da -da 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 -da. Clinton was a supporter of school choice in her books and speeches, she spoke about the need to improve public school education with a special focus on helping minority and low-income children. Now, for those that don't know the charter school system in America, I'm entrenched in it right now because both of my kids go to charter schools. As a matter of fact, the same school umbrella. I have my 13 year old. She's in middle school. And then I have my 16 year old. He's in high school. Now. Let's go ahead and continue with this article. Because it gets good. But in exchange for winning the endorsements of the two big teachers unions. The National Education Association. And the American Federation of Teachers. 
Clinton has become an opponent of the choice and innovation provided by charter schools. Here is our explanation for this incredible act of political expediency. And there's been a lot of political expediency with Hillary Clinton's 2.0, 3.0, 4.5 campaign. Quote, most charter schools, I don't want to say everyone, but most charter schools, they don't take the hardest to teach kids, or if they do, they don't keep them. End quote. This is what she said in an event hosted at the South Carolina Legislative Black Caucus. Now, I'm wondering if her black dialect came out when she was talking to this black caucus in South Carolina. I wish I can get some audio on that. I'm have to look that up and see if I can find any. She added that unlike charter schools, the neighborhood public schools with teachers who are union members, thankfully, 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 oh my gosh, thankfully take everybody and then they don't get the resources or the help and support that they need to be able to take care of every child every child excuse me education are you kidding me are you kidding me this coming from the former state senator of New York let me break this down to you because we know who is the mayor of New York right now and who he just recently endorsed, Hillary Clinton. That man wants to shut down every charter school in New York City. When Hillary Clinton was senator of New York, she was all about charter schools. She was all about school choice. But as this article indicates, as this article states, and as this article enlightens, because of political expediency, because she has to go so far left, and it may be look like I'm pointing right, but my far left, she has to go so far left that she has to go against everything that she was about when she was senator, Everything that she was about when she was, um, what the heck of what I'm thinking about, uh, <laughs> first lady, excuse me, she didn't believe in same sex marriage. No, she didn't believe in open borders and amnesty. No, but let's go to the 2015 Hillary Clinton. The Hillary Clinton that wants to be the president of the United States. The Hillary Clinton that over the weekend, <laughs> over the weekend, got her foot caught in her mouth once again. Talking about how she wants women to come out of the woodwork. Don't be scared if you've been sexually assaulted. Report it. We're behind you. We will embrace you. Except for all those women that her husband... Then, I guess, Arkansas governor, president of the United States, and even after his two terms of president. Whew, do I need to go into it? Do I need to bring up the women's names? Do I need to? I don't. You know who they are. But man, for this woman to come out and say that, she's stuck on stupid. She's absolutely stuck on stupid. Now, Move on from Hillary Clinton. We're gonna we're gonna bring it bring it full circle, and I'm gonna play a clip here from Bill O'Reilly. This has to do with Kate's law that was shut down, defeated by the liberals in this country, by the sanctuary city loving liberals in this country, by the open borders amnesty liberals in this country the fact that they voted this bill down defeated this bill didn't even want to bring the bill to the floor once again showcases what the liberals in this country is all about 
There is clearly a law in existence that prohibits jurisdictions from refusing to cooperate with the federal government when it comes to detaining criminal aliens, criminal immigrants. What are you doing to enforce that law? Well, where we have a situation with, where that situation occurs, we certainly would talk with that jurisdiction. We would reach directly in and enforce the criminal laws against the individuals themselves. But you're not doing so. Give me one example where you have enforced current law that prohibits jurisdictions from claiming sanctuary status. Well, what I'd like to do, sir, is study that issue and provide information to you on that point. All right. Now, Attorney General Lynch has been in office for about a year. All right. Eric Holder was in office for six years. Neither Mr. Holder or Ms. Lynch has done anything about sanctuary cities. For Ms. Lynch to sit there and say she doesn't know what the issue is, startling. We haven't given up on case law, but I have given up on the Obama administration. I must tell everybody tonight, uh, I have given up now. And you know I what? do not believe that the President of the United States, all right, is concerned enough about the safety of the American people for me to feel comfortable. He is not, and he's he not will concerned. not change. He hasn't changed right. in his he isn't going to he's change. Not change. He's going to go out. That's what I just said to Ed Henry. The CYA factor is enormous. That's right. The I problem mean, is that these policies are now suicidal. All right. Ladies, thank you. There you have it, people. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The liberal left, communist, Marxist, fascist political faction that exists in America, running rampant, trying to once again make sure that, that a Republican president does not get elected. That's what this is all about. is about votes in regards to illegal immigration, amnesty, open borders, all that. It's all about votes. It's all about keeping power within the Democrat fold and making sure that all of these illegal criminal aliens coming into America vote Democrat. There was, there, there's no compassion. They don't give a damn about these people. It's all about keeping their power and making sure that a Republican president does not get elected ever again going forward in America. Point blank. Now, I can't blame the liberal, fascist, communist, Marxist party in America all by themselves. Because we have the establishment GOP, these rhinos running around here with that horn coming out their head. They know that cheap labor, that's right, cheap labor will no longer exist for their companies that they have within this realm of, of the United States of America that we live in. You know what I'm talking about. You know the deal. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The GOP establishment and these companies that they have, these companies that they allow these illegals to come in and allow them to work for 0.2.5% off of, off of a penny. Cheap labor, GOP. Votes, Democrat. Keep that in your brain. Let it, it immerse. Let it just sink in into your medulla oblongata, cereal, cerebral cortex, cerebellum. Democrat, votes, GOP cheap labor. There, there is no, there's no way around it. Or this illegal immigration situation that we have, this illegal invasion that we've had for decades now, would have been solved decades ago. Point blank. It is, it, you, you, you come to me with a different scenario. You come to me with a different outcome. As to why we have allowed this situation to go as long as it has, I'm all ears. Democrats, votes. Republicans, cheap labor equals illegal immigration. I, I, I don't even know what else to say. Don't, I have nothing else to say. Because it's the truth, and the truth will set you free. <laughs> now, before. And I got about four minutes or so left before I have to sign off on these video and audio airwaves here on War Radio. This is the political heat with yours truly, Dan Adams, the soulful conservative. There is something that I've been wanting to talk about, been wanting to bring to light. And it's in regards to these idiots running around on college campuses and i'm talking about 
the African American, black, whatever you want to call it, community of the higher education realm here in America. I got a couple things I need to say to you and get off my chest. If you haven't checked out my Political Heat video blog today, just go to my site, thepoliticalheat.com, click on the video tab, and you'll see my rendition edition of the Political Heat video blog. And it was entitled, Hussein's Baby Bottle Generation. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, what do you mean by that, Dan? Well, let me break it down to you. You have individuals. And now I am going to put some Caucasian individuals within that realm as well because they are sympathetic to these black folks' plight. So I'm going uh, I'm going to put in a bowl all these ignorant black folk and now these ignorant white folk that want to tag along and want to be not the person deemed racist, not the person to be deemed a bigot because you're not down for the cause. Are you kidding me, America? What? What? Every day I wake up and I see a different situation going on in academia across America. You got babies with bottles in their mouths. And look at me, 42 years old, went to college, still old, still paying school loans. Like many of us in America are still are. When I went to school, I went there to get what? An education. That's right, an education. If anything that went out of the realm of me getting my education was dealt with in a personal matter. Back then, of course, the internet world that we live in now was not prominent. Shoot, it wasn't even... It wasn't even in the incubator at that point. But if I had any issues with anything, I would go see my school counselor, whoever, in charge, and get the problem fixed. Get the problem addressed. No, we got ignorant ass baby black folk in America, in academia, in the coll collegiate realm here in America. And I'm speaking to you, ignorant ass black folk, even though now we got some ignorant white folk in there now. But I'm talking mainly to you ignorant black folk in colleges and universities across America. Get a life. Get the baby bottle out of your mouth. Strap up your bootstraps. Stop acting like everyone on this planet who's white is racist. Stop acting like everyone is after you, trying to get at you, trying to take you down, trying to pull you down, trying to keep you from where you're going. And if you were my kid, i spank you like you were an eight-year-old and tell your ass to get to class. It's time for the nonsense to end. So to all my fellow Caucasian presidents, chancellors, whoever, running these universities... Looking about the, like they're going to quake in their boots at this point. If some black kid comes up and says somebody says something racist to him. Or somebody did this. Or I can't find my safe zone. You better recognize. It's about education. Not capitulation. It's not about indoctrination. But it's about education. Time to wake up people. It's time to wake up America. It's time to put our best foot forward. For those that don't understand what the best foot forward is, if you keep listening to yours too, Dan Adams, a.k.a. the so-called conservative, you'll get that. So as I wind out today, as I break it down, 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 thank you for listening, thank you for joining, thank you for viewing yours truly, Dan Adams, a.k.a. the so-called conservative, live here on World Radio. This was The Political Heat, Monday evenings, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My time is up. Until next time, God bless. Peace. Ha <laughs> ha.